Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you Alibi Me, a suspense play starring Mr. Mickey Rooney. A showdown. This time it's a showdown. No more even Stevens. A showdown. I've took all I'm going to take from him. It's tough enough to hustle a buck even without interference from Julie, without aggravation from Julie. This time it's a showdown with me and him. For real. Julie! Listen to... No manners. No knock on the door. No could I come in. No good afternoon. No manners. No class. Always on the muscle, huh? I want to talk to you, Julie. Not so loud. A little more relaxative with the voice. This ain't no candy store in Brownsville. What's the big idea? Didn't you hear what I said? You ain't on no street corner. You're in a high-class office. Upstairs at dance school. Underneath a music professor. You hear him? Yeah, I hear him. So keep it quiet. Keep it class. I want to know what's the big idea, you hear me? I just came from Pitkin Avenue. There ain't a candy store. There ain't a pool room. There ain't a bar that'll handle my punch boards anymore. Not one. We now take from Julie, they said. They said correct. But that's my territory, Julie. I, I built up that punch board I know, business there. I know, I I watched. You'd hustle good. You build it up real nice for me. And I appreciate it. I already sent you the biggest lollipop I could find. The biggest lollipop in town for the town's biggest sucker. Julie, I'm warning You're you. You're warning me what? What? What'll you do? Give me a double whammy like in the funnies? <laughs> no, ever since we were kids, you hate me, I hate you, and it's like... Like a kind of mutual life insurance for both of us, huh? There's not a cop on the force that don't know how we feel about each other. You're forgetting what Larkin said those years ago. If ever one of you punks get knocked off, he says, my first suspect will be the other. So what are you warning me? Grow up, Georgie, grow up. I'm not going to let you get away with it. That punch board business is mine. I need it, see? You need I the need dough. the dough, too. You need the dough. Well, I'll tell you what. This is just your speed. Here. Here's a half a buck. Run down and get me a corned beef sandwich and keep the change. Here, catch. Julie! Julie, I... Look at the face on him. If looks could kill, huh, kid? Ah, uh, go away now, huh? I got a million one things on my mind. I need you standing there like a hole in the head. Larkin, six o'clock, I got to report to Larkin on my parole. <laughs> what? Georgie, hey. Georgie, put down that phone. They'll know you've done it. Georgie, Larkin, they'll know. Hey, no! <laughs> It's done. I put my hand on the big vein in his neck. I can't feel nothing. Not a flutter. He's dead. In just a moment, Mr. Mickey Rooney in the first act of Alibi Me. Hey, Harlow. Got any New Year's resolutions? Sure have, Hap. First, I'm going to get away fast. Well, goodbye. No, 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 Hap. Get my car away to quick starts with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Oh? Uh, what else? Uh, smoother performance, Hap. You an actor, Harlow? No, smoother engine performance is what I mean. And the formula is to replace faded, fatigued, worn-out spark plugs with fresh, flawless, ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Uh, sure, but... Any more pledges, Harlow? Well, I'll save gas. Less driving, huh? No, no. More driving, half. Because when you replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, you get quick starts, smoother performance, and gas savings. Why, you just can't buy better spark plugs for your car than Autolite. But your resolution, Harlow. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Friends, resolve now to see your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer soon. And have him replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. And whether you choose the resistor type or the standard type, you'll be right, because you're always right with Autolite. And now, with Alibi Me and the performance of Mr. Mickey Rooney, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. I look at dead Julie lying there. Then I pick up the phone I hit him with. I, I, I wipe it clean. No, no fingerprints. And I stand still and listen. Nothing. No screams, no whistles, no pounding on the door. Only the music professor underneath playing like nothing happened. Nothing much has. Just one stinker less in the world. I look down at Julie and I remember standing next to him in Larkin's office in the precinct station house years ago. And Lieutenant Larkin saying... If ever one of you punks is knocked off, my first suspect will be the other. 
Better have a good alibi, whichever one of you does it. Because I'm warning you now, once I get you down to headquarters, you're a hot seater. Good alibi. How much time do I have to set up a good alibi? Ten after four. And at six, Julie was supposed to report the Larkin till six. An hour and fifty minutes to set up an alibi. Not much time. Come on, kid. Come on, get going. I, I leave Julie's office. Julie Moore promotions. Light my prints off the knob and hurry downstairs. Hurry down for an alibi I need. Yeah, I need people too for it. But who? Who'll alibi for me? Leo. He's the one. He'll alibi me. Leo. Leo's behind the bar. I, I punk myself down at one end where I'm all alone. Leo sees me, gives me a big grin. I feel relaxed for the first time since I've done it. I wink and I give him a nod. He comes home and we shake. Georgie, Georgie, Lord, love your boy. You're a sight for sunrise. Yeah, what do you have, huh? sir? Just name it. It's in the house. Uh, g- g- give me a scotch, will you, Leo? We've known each other for a long time, huh? Oh, I hate to think of the years that's passed since we met. I'm getting old, Georgie, yeah. old. <laughs> Not too old to remember couple of favors I've done, though, for you, huh? Georgie, boy, not if I was to live to be a hundred. Ask any of the old bunch what I say. Georgie, I say, you can have me right arm up to there any time. Yeah, what you say? Him. Drink hearty, yeah. son. Well, here's the other. Thanks, I... Leo, I, I want you to do something for me. Well, I'm a little short right now. Huh? I had a gallstone cut out last summer. Oh, no, 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 it ain't money, it ain't money, Leo. It's just, well, in case you should be asked. I've been sitting here since... Half past three, huh? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Why? Well, what, what's the difference? Why? Anybody special you want me to say it to? What are you, you going to do it or not? Look, I mean, George, I got a right to know what I'm getting into. You want me for an alibi? I want to know why. Well, let's not make a production out of it. Chances are you might not even be asked. But if you are, I, I just been sitting here since half past three, see? Okay. Would Lieutenant Larkin maybe be one of the ones who might ask? Could be. What, what makes you think of him? I just seen him going to Andy's place across the street. He's on the prowl. Just now. Leo, you got to do this for me. You've got to. Not on your life. I ain't alibying you. Not with Larkin in the picture. You ain't the guy to forget favor, are you, huh? Look, you You'll want money, I'll find money. I don't know where, but I'll find it. You want food, I'll feed you. No, you want clothes, not... I'll clothe you. Just say the word. No, Leo, That's no not... alibi, George. No uh... alibi. Excuse me, I got custom. <laughs> I feel like taking the bottle and smashing it over his head. Leo, Leo, just wait till heat's off of me this once. Now, come a day, Leo, when I remind you what you just said to me. Georgie, Georgie, take a hold of yourself. It's 25 past four. You got only 95 minutes left till six o'clock. When Julie don't show, Larkin goes looking first for Julie and for you. I got to get ready for Larkin when he finds me. It's got to be a good alibi. He won't settle for less. Think, Georgie, think. Who do you know? Who your friends try to remember? Well, you don't even have to have any friends. I mean, anybody you can pressure will do. Put down that bottle. Put it down before you drop it and everybody turns around and looks at you. Forget the drink and get out of here. Oh, no, not that front door, stupid. Larkin's across the street. One look at your pussy, he knows something's wrong. The back way. Out the back way. Air feels good. I'm hot all over. I can, I can feel sweat running down my legs. It's like an electric current. It's juicing through my body. An electric... George, breathe deep. Take good deep breaths. Oh, that's good. That feels better. Now it's gone. Then it's gone like it was never there. That's your like, Georgie. That's your Moxie. You're not... Yet. You got brains. You're not like... You get an alibi. You'll, you'll have it all set before six. Then, then let Larkin come. You can laugh in his face. Sure. What time is it? Five minutes more gone. Georgie, think. Stop right where you are. Think. Oh. 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 Aha. You see, it works. The second thought and everything comes to you. Joni. That's who Joni. She'll be your alibi. Oh, Georgie, you're such a dope. Wasting all that time worrying, aggravating yourself. And all you had to do was come over to the apartment. One, two, three. You your peace of mind. She's crazy about you. Always has been ever since that day up at Bear Mountain. Which apartment was hers? E.F. Gina. No, J. J. Yeah, J for Joni, huh? Let her be in. Please let her be in. I'll, I'll never ask nothing again. Just let her be in. And... Well, 
now. Oh, Look with the baby. cat. Kiss her, Georgie. Kiss her. Kiss her hard. That's right. That's it. Now pick her up in your arms, carry her in the living room. Set her down on your lap. Good, good. You ought to be in the movies. <laughs> oh, Joni. I don't know how I managed to stay away so long, baby. I shouldn't talk to you. I really shouldn't. It's more than two months. You want to know why? You began to mean too much to me, kid. So stay away from her, I says to myself. Just don't ever see her. She'll wear off. I, I was wrong, Joni. You mean much more to me than ever, though. I, I couldn't hold out no longer. That's why I'm here. Oh, George. Yeah. Baby, don't ever stay away again, no matter what the reason. Don't ever stay away from me. Shh, shh, shh. I'm, I'm back for good. Honest? Oh, sure. You mean look that? At, look at me and the answer. You, you get it, huh? Take a good look. Oh, George. See? Satisfied, huh? Oh, it's been terrible without you. All the time singing the blues, not feeling like going out or seeing anybody. Just slopping around the apartment and listening to the radio. I thought I'd go crazy. Yeah, that's over and done with, honey. Happy times are back now. Y you know what? We're going to celebrate tonight. Yeah, put, put on a fancy smoke, we'll go step and dinner, a show, dancing after. How does that sound? Mm. I got a new number I've been dying to wear. Yeah, good, good, good. Uh, anybody... Here today? No, not a soul. I was all alone, feeling just awful. Until uh, you came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joni, look, in case anybody asks you that... Any, anybody's... Not that anybody's going to... I mean, but in case they should, do me a favor. Huh? Will you tell them I was here with you I'll all day? I'll tell the world you were here with me from the rooftops. I don't care who knows. Would you do that, honey? I love you, Georgie. Oh, baby, I love you, I too. just love you and love you. Ah, you... Swell. I mean, look, Joni, in, in case anybody wants you to be definite, will you say I was here since, so oh, since half past three and stick to it no matter what? Half past three? I'll say I... What? Huh? Just Wait a second. What are you trying to get me to do? Oh, relax now, relax, honey. What are you sitting up for? No. Now? No, Georgie. What's, what's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? Man? Plenty. Huh? Plenty's the matter. You dirty, no good, miserable no. piece of humanity. Now, Joni, listen I'm to beginning to get it. I know I'm not the smartest girl ever lived, but how smart do you have to be to get this picture? You ought to be... You stayed away because I was getting to be a habit, Look, huh? You, stop, honey, you can't please. live without me. Isn't that the way it went? You want me. me. You want to spend the afternoon here. Look. Well, isn't that just too touching for words? Trying to sucker me to give yourself an alibi. Now, Johnny, stop yelling. Listen to me. What I said was true. I need you. Honestly. Sure you do. To give you an alibi. That's why you came here. Just so I'll say you were here with me since half past three. You want to use me. What have you been up to, Georgie? Huh? What been... have you done since 3.30 that makes you need me like that? No, don't tell me, because it's no good. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what's done to you either. Huh? An arrest, jail, the electric chair, I don't care. Yeah. You get no alibi from me, Mr. Wise Guy. Now pick yourself up out of that chair and get out of here. <laughs> Don't slug Georgie. You got no time for that now. Lady, but not now. The main thing now is that alibi. You wasted enough time with her now. Yeah. You'll have to work fast. You wasted a whole half hour. And what did you get for it? Nothing. Only 65 minutes left, kid. That ain't much. That's a complete show in a newsreel theater. It's a five course dinner at the Little Romanian. 65 minutes. To find Julie at six or a few minutes after, and then. Close it, Georgie. Close it. Larkin on the prowl. He mustn't see you. He, he doesn't let him see you larking, sees you. He'll put two and two together. He'll talk. He'll talk to Joni. He'll learn you're trying to set an alibi down to the cellar, kid. Try the backyard. Wait a minute. No, no. No, no panic. Think. Who will alibi you? But good. Good airtight, ironclad. Cement foundation alibis. Where, where do you get one? Think hard. Who's around town? Who's left? Timmy. Yeah, yeah, Timmy. Don't. You should have thought of him first. Timmy, lying there in the hospital. Timmy, hurry, George. Run! Hurry! <laughs> Autolite is bringing you Mr. Mickey Rooney in Alibi Me. Tonight's production and radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hey, Hap, uh, help me spark a plug. You mean I can help tell about... I do, about Autolite spark plugs. The spark plugs that are ignition engineered to work as a perfect team with your car's ignition system. You know what they'll do for your car, don't you, Hart? No, I sure do, Hap, because when you replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition engineered Autolite spark plugs, you'll get smoother performance, quick starts... Gas savings. You rang the bell that time, Harlow. Well, that's because ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs are designed by the same Autolite engineers who designed the coil, distributor, and all the other important parts of the complete ignition system. 
used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. Why, Autolite spark plugs are world famous for quality and performance. Go on, Harlow. Well, friends, see your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer and have him replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, either the resistor type or the standard type, because you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Mickey Rooney in Elliot Lewis's production of Alibi Me, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. The lobby of the general hospital is filled with visitors, some laughing, some looking sad. I walk past the desk in the elevators and up the stairs, the fourth floor. I'm, I'm in Luxy. I see nobody. Nobody sees me. And a quick dash from the quarter to Timmy's room, and I just... <clears throat> Georgie. Oh, Georgie, it's good to see you. Hi, Timmy. You're looking 100% sorry. I didn't have time to bring candy or flowers. How you doing, kid? Oh, not good. Not bad at all. Pull up the chair, Georgie. Sit down. Yes. You know something? You look sicker than me. Uh, how you feeling, Tim? Oh, not bad. You know how it is with what I got. The worst part's lying here in the hospital. I'm a guy who always likes to be in action, you know? But I'm alive and I'm not kicking. Yeah. Doctors say it was a miracle. Yes, yeah, sure. Well, how are things with you, kid? Tim, I'm, I'm leveling with you, see? I come up by the stairs. I, I didn't want no one to see me. Yeah? In a spot, Georgie? I need an alibi for this afternoon, see? Since half past three. You got it, Georgie. Yeah. I'm in this private room. Nobody comes near it. The nurses and orderlies don't come unless I give out a yell. Mm-hmm. And I can have visitors any time I like, but no one was here all day, not even my wife. Give me a... I'll, I'll never forget you for this. Georgie, you got one of the oldest alibis in the world. What's that? You were sitting up with a sick friend. If anybody <laughs> does it, send him to me. <laughs> Shows you, you never know who's your friend until <laughs> you're in the jam, huh? Here, wait, wait. I'll have a nurse come in so she can see you. Then you take the elevator down, ask some dumb questions so he'll remember you. Do things at all, kid. Do them right. Yeah, you don't miss a trick, do you? Thanks again, Tim. <laughs> I'll ring for it. Now. Yeah. Georgie. What is Georgie? What is it? My ticker. What is it? Georgie? What is it? You, you want to drink, drink a water? I don't. You want to? I don't feel so good. What? Call. Timmy. Timmy. Don't worry. Timmy. Don't worry about the alibi. Don't. Timmy, don't. Timmy, don't, don't die now, Tim. Oh. Tim, don't answer me, please. Don't. <laughs> He's dead. My alibi is dead. Stop moving, Georgie. No point hanging around. You can't do nothing for him. And he can't do nothing for you. And if you don't find that alibi fast, you'll be seeing him maybe sooner than you think. I leave the hospital where I came in and go into the lobby. I look at the clock. Forty-five minutes left. It's a quarter after five. Forty-five minutes left. Forty... Five minus ten seconds. Twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Forty-four minutes left. Hurry, George. Hurry! I'm, I'm sunk. It's five or six and I'm sunk. And in ten minutes, maybe Larkin will be here. And I got nothing. Nothing in the way of an alibi. I, I tried now. I'm tired of trying. What's the use? War shop. I got no alibi. So I come home. I'm walking upstairs, see? And I hear a sound. My landlady... My landlady, Mrs. Edinger, is nailing down linoleum in the hallway. Mrs. Edinger, yeah. How does that song go? Castles in Spain. Clear the window, play it back in your own backyard, sure. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Edinger. Here, huh? honey, let me do that for you. Give me that hammer. Oh, it's you, Georgie. Thanks, but never mind. <laughs> You just come in? Yeah, yeah, but if anyone asks you, especially Larkin, you tell them I was in all afternoon, understand? Larkin? Lieutenant Larkin? Yeah, yeah, that's him. Oh, I couldn't do that, Georgie. I won't lie to that cop. Don't count on it. I do count on it, I do. And you do it, too. Don't don't, don't, don't shake your head, no. I, I say you'll do it. You'll, you'll tell Larkin. I'm in my room all day, No, <laughs> no, Georgie. Mrs. Edinger, you don't tell Larkin. I'm in all day, and I'll tell him about Charlotte. I don't have any idea what you mean. Matter of fact, not even one. 
Uh, please, Georgie, I don't want no trouble. I'm uh, honest. I work hard to keep my kids uh, honest. You keep your kids honest, huh? So honest that Charlotte lifts a fur jacket right out of the department store. I made her give it back. I marched her into the store myself. We oh, gave did. it back to the manager. Sure, I know, I know. But a crime's a crime, whether the store prosecutes or Georgie, not. You, know, you, you take something. She's that... only 15. You, you wouldn't tell. Her life would be ruined, uh, Georgie. No, no, no. Mrs. Hedinger, what's to cry Am I going to tell on Charlotte? Of course not. I'll keep my mouth shut just like you want. And you'll open your mouth just like I want, and everything will be fine. If Larkin asks you, I, I wasn't out of my room all afternoon. But, agree? You won't tell him about Charlotte? Not a word. I take an oath. Look, I, I swear it. All right, George. All right. But not a word about Charlotte. My memory is terrible. As long as yours is good. And there's my alibi. Safe, sealed, and delivered. <laughs> yeah, the best alibi in the world. Quarter past six. Won't be long now, but watch yourself when Larkin is here, kiddo. Just the right attitude, remember. Not too anxious, not too casual. Just just right, you know. Yeah? Who is it? Open up, Georgie. It's me, Larkin. Uh, who is it? Oh, well, well, what a surprise. Yeah. And, and, and to what do I owe this great pleasure? Remember, I once told you, Georgie, if anything happened to Julie or to you, my first pickup would be the other one. Yeah, I remember. So what? Oh, oh. you mean... Julie is... He's been... He's been made dead. No, kid. No. What do you know? And you come over to me with your shoulder to cry on, huh? You're not surprised? Uh, I'm not the only guy who hated Julie, you know. Let me know who did it when you find out. I'll contribute a sawbuck to his defense, see? Save your money, Georgie. You might need it. How come? Remember I told you at the same time, you better have a good alibi, because once I got you down to headquarters, I'd prove you did it. Yeah, that word seems to strike a bell. I'll give, Georgie. Where were you today? Huh? I, I was I was nowhere. Well, that a fact. That's a fact. I was right here all afternoon. Can you prove it? It ain't easy to prove you was somewhere alone all day. You Can know, you it... prove you were here? Well, I didn't see anybody except... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Edinger. My landlady. Yeah, all know? right. Let's hear her version. Mrs. Edinger? Hey, Mrs. Edinger! Hi, Come on up here a minute, will you? Yeah, right now. All right, I'm coming. Now, boys, always something. Come up here. You want me down there? Yeah. Down there. You want yeah. me up here, George? All right, Please, all right. If it's a complaint, I don't want to hear. Tell me tomorrow. Today, I can't take another This is one. Lieutenant Larkin. He wants uh, to ask you. Sit down, you. Mrs. Edinger. You must be tired. I won't keep you long. Uh, were you in all day? The whole day. Was uh, Georgie in all day? Georgie? This Georgie? Well, how many you got in the place? Yes, sure, he was in. You're positive? I'm positive, I'm positive. What makes you so positive? What makes me so positive? I cleaned his room, that's what makes me so positive. Yeah, that's what, that's what she cleaned it. Yeah, and I pressed a suit for him later, that's what makes me so positive. Yeah. And when I was sweeping the hall, his door was open and I saw him. And when I was downstairs, he yelled down to me a couple of times. You're uh, prepared to swear to that in a court of law? Go ahead, Miss Edinger. Swear by your daughter's head. I swear. I swear it. Yeah. All right, all right. Thank you. You can go. I work hard all day, all night. Yeah. Well, that's it then, Georgie. Meaning? Meaning your alibi stinks, as far as I'm personally concerned. But for the record, it lets you off the hook. You hate that, don't you? You'd like to hang the big one on me, wouldn't you? I'll see you around, Georgie. Keep your nose clean. Yeah, sure thing. Lennox, Mr. Oh. George Lennox. Uh, yeah, that's me, kid. Yeah. I got a package for you. Blue Arrow Delivery Service, sign here. Yeah, good. Who's it from? Uh, uh, Mr. Moore, Mr. Julie Moore. Open it, Georgie. I want to see. Yeah. yeah, I'll open it up and see. It's a lollipop. I never seen such a big one. 
Well, that's your opinion. Beat it. Will you get out of here? Look, you go on. Beat it. What are you waiting for? What do you think he's waiting for, George? He stake the You kid. stake him. What am I, a mint? You stake him. Go ahead. It's... Okay, cheapskate. Okay, keep your lousy tip. Fine thing. I'm here twice this morning and three times this afternoon, and you're not in. Five times up and down them stairs and not even a nickel tip. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Hey, thanks, man. Shut up! A whole buck. Thanks. I mention it, kid. You deserve it. You earned it. Shut up! Thanks. Oh, I, I almost forgot. There's a message goes with it. To the biggest sucker in town. That's all there is to the message. It's enough. Get your hat and coat, Georgie. <laughs> Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mickey Rooney. Hey, Hap, do you know something? They're a great group. Who, Harlow? Why, the more than 400 products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants from coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of America's finest cars, Electric windshield wipers, starting motors, voltage regulators, coils, distributors, wire and cable, generators. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. And because all Autolite parts are original factory parts, you can be sure that that you're right. Because you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, Miss Ginger Rogers as star of Vamp Till Dead. And in weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as Eve Arden, Ezio Pinza, and Paul Douglas, all appearing in tales well calculated to keep you in suspense. is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Alibi Me was written by Third Jeffrey and adapted for suspense by Walter Newman. Mickey Rooney is appearing by arrangement with MGM, producers of the Technicolor production Pagan Love Song, starring Esther Williams, Howard Keel, and Mina Gombel. Remember, next week on Suspense, Miss Ginger Rogers in Vamp Till Dead. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.